Hey, Ethan, how you doing? I'm Terrell from Big Gold Belt Media. How you doing today? I'm good, Terrell. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. I'm pretty, really excited to talk to you about this all week. You, you have been having uh, quite the year. <laughs> it's been a good year. B busy. You, you, you talk about, uh, I mean, I feel like without even looking, I feel like I'm seeing you in everything. Like every time I, t I turn around, you got your name attached to something. Um, nice. I love that. That's good for me. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, just recently just watched Blood for Dust. Um, did, you know, went into that blonde and, and didn't even expect the, um, to, to see you come across that. And I was like, okay, this, this was good. And of course that was part of the Tribeca film festival and that, that movie's doing numbers right now. So congrats on that as well. That was another good movie in the resume. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but God is a bullet. That's, that's, that's what, that's what we're here to talk about today. I, I got to tell you, uh, I, I, I watched it and um, it was a tough watch. <laughs> yeah. It's you know, I, I, I have, um, four daughters and a granddaughter. And so reading the script for, for Nick talked to me about doing this movie like 10 years ago, and I didn't know what it was about. I just thought that's a cool name. God is a bullet. Okay. That sounds fun. And then he said, we're, we're going to make it. Here's the script. And I read it and I was like, Ooh, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot of gruesome stuff I have to do. Um, but I got excited about doing it. To be honest with you, the hardest thing for me to shoot was uh, right in the beginning, I have to get physical with that little girl. Yeah. And and we shot that so much because Nick would come up to me after every take and he'd go, I can see you taking it easy on her. It doesn't look like you're hurting her at all. And she would turn around and she was this like tough, awesome little girl. And she'd go, yeah. I'm you think I can't take it I'm tough you know this whole thing and I right. and I'd look at her and picture one of my daughters who who my youngest is a similar age to her and I'd be like I can't I, I mean this is so hard to do like that truly was the hardest it's one thing to be posturing as evil or to have a scene where, where you're talking to people and saying really disgusting things and 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 portraying evil in that way it's another thing when you actually have to physically handle another person that was really hard for me yeah i, I mean like you talk about acting i mean <laughs> like this is this is this is where it's at man like i said as you know ha having the option to to be able to you know you know get the early screen and pause it i had to step away a couple of times i'm like all right this it's a little much you know they have it's the, a lot yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know I, I i watch you know i watch horror movies from time to time but i'm like i, I think just more of the grounded realism of of, of the intensity and somebody tried to compare this to like john wick and i was like nah this is this is way worse than john wick. <laughs> it's like this is i'm like because there is more detailed in this movie about what you see and i think that's intentional um, yeah, I think with a movie like John Wick, there's a heightened reality where you're not really in this universe anymore right. or or like a, a, a Marvel movie, you know, 400 people could die in a Marvel movie or, or that one Marvel movie where half the population of the universe. Died, <laughs> yeah. Right. Like that's a lot of people they killed. Right. But you're in a fantasy. This is not meant to be a fantasy. This is meant to be gruesome reality. And it is re even in a horror movie, you're in some kind of a fantasy, right? Like, you know, how often I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head, like e the recent evil dead movie where the mom is killing everyone, oh, no. but she's, she's, this is a fantasy, right? So there's, you're detached from reality in a way. And this is trying to place you squarely in reality and show you kind of the most brutal, heinous side of humanity that they could possibly think of. And, you know, honestly, the problem is, is that kind of shit exists on some level. Like people right. can be really awful to each other. And I think we often will tone it down for a movie. Yeah, especially especially in American movies, like where whereas though like you go overseas, they don't they don't cut no cards right when it comes to that level of violence. But for some reason over here, where you know we're we're we're, we're gun city everywhere, but for some reason in the <laughs> movies we we got a ratings code and certain things have to be approved. I'm like I I don't I don't get it. Um, I, and the first thing I, I noted when I finished watching this movie is I said I, I I said that I think everybody on set has to do some type of mental therapy after this movie is over for yeah. at least a couple of weeks because there's no way to tap into these characters and be like oh I'm I'm fine I'm going to do my next movie you know what I mean without leaving leaving that world yeah yeah I I got to um 
luckily we shot it and there there was a, a fourth of july break and i got to go spend it with my wife and my four kids right. um and uh and that was nice you know it was like a decompression midway through the movie shoot where where i got to just go like okay i am a i'm a father i am a husband i am a moral person i am not bad you know it right. was nice and then immediately following i had to do the same thing which is spend time with my family and be a nice person again <laughs> You know, I think I think it's also weird for me, you know, obviously, you know, growing up, seeing you and seeing your kind of metamorphosis through your your acting career. You know, you've you've gone from comedy to drama to dark drama, um, and, you know, you know, obviously, you know, separating you from your, your character from My Name is Earl and, you know, your Kevin Smith stuff to to this. And I'm like, is this even the same guy? You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's such a leap, man. And I, I got to say, it's definitely impressive to see you level up and, and, and grow in, in, in your, in your career, man, as I've gotten to watch you this, cause this is, this is crazy dark, man. I had to, had to, uh, had to, uh, you know, stay up a little bit. I couldn't go to sleep directly after watching this. So. <laughs> I believe you, man. Oh. No, it was, it was, it was tough. And, and the other thing, uh, that's different from this for, from anything else, you know, I've played guys where, our values are very different and I, and I disagree and think the, the, the character is just reprehensible, but they're people, they're human beings. And I think if I'm trying to take on their perspective as accurately as possible, they think they're doing good. The difference with this is he wants to be doing evil. He, he wants to be harming people. He doesn't think he's doing good. He, 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 he's like a sociopath. Um, so it was almost like trying to remove all traces of humanity from him, which became a harder process than finding humanity to infuse into characters that I disagree with. Does that make sense? It definitely makes sense. Yeah, I, I think the, the line you're crossing over is going to be stuck in my head for the remainder of the year now. <laughs> Uh, what, what I mean, um, this this movie is star studded. Obviously, you know we have uh, we have Nicolaj, we have Jamie, um, yourself. Um, what was it like working with everybody on set? Like everybody was pretty cool. Like you know, everybody was really cool. You know, I didn't have many scenes with a lot of those people. I was kind of off with my crew. For me, the guy who I was excited to get to have scenes with was Jonathan Tucker because I was such a huge fan of his from kingdom from sneakers he's such a consummate professional he's so so good at characters and also has a leading man quality about him too so um getting to work with him was was really exciting and then like brendan sexton the third i i'd worked with him back in the 90s when we were little kids you know so getting to work with him again was amazing and then just being able to work with my good friend nick cassavetes was yeah. awesome yeah, I guess I definitely seen that you guys, you know, it's been a while, a long time since you guys have gotten to do another film or any project together. So, yeah, it was definitely uh, crazy to see that this will be the movie that you, you reunite on. Yeah. Uh, what's, uh, I got, like I said, like you said, you've been, you've been on a hot streak lately. Uh, at, you know, now that this is coming out, this, you know, it's supposed to be like this week. Uh, what's what's next on the list? You know, are, are we going to get more 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 violent projects, or is it going to be a little lighter? No. <laughs> well, there's uh there's Blood for Dust, which is a heavy a heavy movie yeah. also, but not quite uh, as um scary I think as God is a Bullet. It's less scary, but also equally heavy. And then I've got a movie called um, Manadrone coming out later this year okay. with Adrian Brody and Jesse Eisenberg. And um, and then I just filmed, man, one of the most fun things I've ever done with two comedians who I love. Uh, Stavros Halkius, I played his brother, and Bobby Kelly, I played his son. And, you know, I love comedians and I love comedy and... Um, and Bobby Kelly is only five years older than me. So getting to play his son was so much fun, just poking fun at him on set. And, and, and uh, I think that movie, which is called exit statement, which won't be out for a while. Cause we just shot it um, was, is going to be hilarious. Really, really funny. Well, you already know, I'm going to be looking forward to, to, to all of those <laughs> as we, as we got them coming up. Um, kind of in between, you know, you kind of going from one role to the other. Um, any, any, any gaming getting done there? You're a big gamer? No, I, okay. you know, I, 
I w- did a movie called Mr. Woodcock. I think it was 2005 <laughs> we shot that. And, you know, um, they gave me a gift at the beginning of production, which was this Xbox and, you know, a couple hundred video games. And sure. sometimes movies will give you start gifts. And And one night after work, I started playing a video game. And then the next thing I knew, they were knocking on my trailer like, you're still here. It's time to go back to work. (laughs) I had played this video game all night. And my wife said that video game is never coming into our house and you are never allowed that. So video games have been off limits to me for quite some time. Yeah, I, I, I can imagine that you get to this adult stage of your life. You just don't have the time that you that you normally would have had back in the day. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I could definitely understand that. Well, Ethan, look, I, I definitely appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time once again for, for doing this interview with me today. It's such a pleasure to be able to talk to you, man. Like, you know, after, you know, viewing so many of your works um, and just, you know, I I don't know. I don't know what I expect to go into this. I don't think I expect you to be a character or anything. With like that. But you just like it just surprises me. So like you know, every time I get to do this, you know, everybody either comes in with a different accent or they're a lot nicer in person than I expect. Sure. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Well, I hope I was nothing like gutter. That's no, that's Jesus, my no. hope. Jesus, no. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God. But look, I, I appreciate you again. Thank you for taking the time to do this. And I hope we can do this again. Yes, sir. Terrell, it was entirely my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. See you.